So here we're looking at 4-4-2 in our possession when we're attacking the opponent and our reaction after it and the transition back so that we're able to counter attack. So if I play this along we will see that we've got the ball in the opponent's half, we're looking to attack. So number 9 takes a shot, so this could be any sort of play. Um, I'll replay that one, so yeah this could be any sort of play. Um, where we get a shot away, so number nine goes to shoot, and there we go. So the keeper gets the ball, number nine shot, and now the importance of transitioning back. And what we're aiming for here is we're wanting to invite the opponent in green to attack us, um, so we're wanting them to come into our half because then that's going to leave gaps behind their defenders where we've got strikers with a bit of pace who can exploit the centre-backs who generally are a lot slower than strikers so it's a really good way to um, to outwit the defenders really and, and it's something that I don't believe is used enough really in football um, allowing the other team to, to come onto you it's almost a lot of it is high press which I do also think is is a really good tactic to use. It just depends how you use it. So, um, yeah, allowing we'll see as this progresses, but allowing the uh, the other team to to come onto you just creates so much space in behind, which is really really effective to exploit. So here we can see we'll let that transition a bit more. So there we go. So the team's transitioned really well back into a four four two formation. Uh, this is something that. 100% needs needs a good amount of work on. Um, it's tough to say how much exactly, but just just progressively getting the team to really understand what positions they need to be in, and having having leaders on the pitch really helps that because you can have a defender, centre back, or it doesn't really matter if they're different positions, but say a centre centre back, centre mid, or a striker, they're in the middle of the pitch, they're able to to um, they're able to speak to any real, any person really on the pitch. Um, so if you were say like a right mid, you would struggle to get to the left back to get a message across. So um, yeah, having the leaders in the team is really important because they can um, adjust the other players into a better position. So we're able to, to count as we need to. So here in a really good position, the other team's gonna come onto us more. So they're gonna come forward with the ball as they would so as you can see, the space behind is increasing as we go. So three, we're playing to ten. They're trying to build up from the back. Um, what's another really good point here is by having everyone drop back, th there isn't a lot of space at all, especially the keeper should always be switched on and told that this is their area. That half of the pitch, any balls over the top, they should be coming for. Obviously, I've left the keeper sort of further in their box than they would normally be. However, a keeper is really important. They can sweep all day long. And the, the further back we are like this, it's going to take a 10 out of 10 ball for that ball to go like this in here and stop before the keeper gets to it to outwit the centre back as well. And the number nine to go through and score is, is really unlikely. Um, so we're just reducing the opportunity for the other team to, to attack us successfully, really. Um, but yeah, going back to this point, 2v1s all over the pitch is crucial. So we're on this side of the pitch. If it was the opposite side and the ball went this way, this way, this way, we'd expect the whole team to transition. Three up here, ten, nine and ten do have really important jobs because they're they're the ones that need to be they need to be fit. Um, but obviously, again, we don't want to overwork them, but still they need to be fit and they need to be ready to to do a lot of running to be up and down. Um, but that can be adjusted as you need. So say it was to go all the way to number two round, the whole team would transition over. Um, three would get seven. Eleven would cover seven and the space for two. Four would come over and, and get eight. Um, and then ten would also transition. We would leave the centre-backs because we're happy for the centre-backs to have it. If they want to have it, not an issue at all because they can't go long. The only real pass they can have is a short one into here and a wide one or back round the other way. Um, so it's a really good solid, a 4-4-2, two lines of defence. They're going to have to be really good to work it round. 
and um, depending on what level you're playing if it's a top level they're going to try and break you down the further down you go it's going to be more trying to get the ball in behind which this suits really well so if you're a team that plays at a level um, which a lot of the opposition play with balls in behind this is perfect because the sweeper keeper the um, defense much further back perfect really good and again these they will naturally push forward um, so yeah 2v1 here 2v1 here 2v1 here and 4 would come in um, 8 break it there's there really is a good amount um, good amount of overloads defensively it's going to make it really tricky for the opposition to break us down so we'll let this run through a bit longer so get it back tend to have any other options again you can see the lines here so into 11 2v1 he's had to play quickly and number six has come in read the play well which we would expect them to do um if for any reason it did get to nine five would be covering round four would be in it's again very unlikely they can be breaking us down like this um but again so this could have been won by number two or seven they could have the ball technically here seven could be turning it's the same it's the same one same as five if five was to get the ball here he would still be able to push forward with the ball a bit and clip it into these positions here the channels are really important i've highlighted all of behind the defense the whole line but the channels are crucial really really crucial um i'll make another video as well in the future and if you can see here um attackers the other team sorry the attackers they're attacking down the left hand side if this was to go through to the keeper it's really important we can exploit the space on the opposite side um, but I'll go into more detail on that on my other videos. Um, so here, number six gets the ball straight away. Number nine would start making a run in behind. This is something that we've practiced. So it's not just something, oh, this is going to happen randomly. We've practiced this. We know this is what the aim of the game is. We want to invite pressure onto us. We can deal with that pressure. And then defenders, they know when they win the ball back, they're not just hoofing it. They're putting it into good areas. And the strikers, we have some quick strikers, don't necessarily need to be rapidly quick, but what's important is to um, develop their movement. Really important, that's something that anyone can train. So train their movement, bend the runs, if you make a, a curved run, stay on side, um, and also when to run, really noticing that, okay, the centre-backs won the ball, now's the time to make the run. And as you can see, it makes a run, goes through, 10 switch on as well, um, and just take either nine could run in and shoot or pass it across like he does and scores so yeah really good and again i'll just knit back to this point here so as soon as he wins the ball here this is now nine and ten's reaction is we're almost sort of saying because we're purposely leaving um the four midfielders deeper it's really the responsibility of the strikers here this is only one scenario of the game but this is a really good one the two strikers they're they're the ones that's the reason we're playing with two and not one we're playing with two strikers it's their responsibility to outwit the four defenders especially when they're attacking so the last thing they expect is lose a ball within two seconds ball over the top and the opposition on goal they just, they're not going to be switched on all the time throughout the whole game whereas if we're ready for it this is something that we can exploit so especially getting center backs turn if you're playing against big center backs getting them turning always not not always but i'd say nine times out of ten the strikers can have that agility and and the speed so yeah there we go here are the key points from this video so the first one is transition to original formation so this is looking at times when you take a shot and it goes out for a goal kick or goes into the keeper's hands especially if it's the keeper's hands then the team will need to transition back a lot quicker um, obviously because the ball's still in play the keeper can easily go long um, really going to need to be switched on if it's a shot and the keeper saves it if it goes out for a goal kick still needs to be really switched on and want, we want the same thing for both just really quick transition back into the original 4-4-2 the next one is number two only press opposition past the halfway line so this is going to invite the opposition it's really important to do this invite the opposition into your half the center backs the attackers they're going to come with the ball well realistically the attackers are going to be 
in line with your defence, midfielders with yours, defenders are going to have the ball. So by allowing them to dribble forwards, dribble forwards, they're going to they're going to love that, enjoy that, just come forward, and then then we're going to get them on the counter attack. So it's important just to let them come in first, um, attacking on the attackers, so they will decide um, as soon as they get near the halfway line, just the tiniest bit before, then they'll start engaging. Um, and just a bit of training on that, and it'll be um, yeah, it'll work. It'll work well. So the third point is create defensive overloads. So by working um, to attack the opposition or press the opposition when they get to the halfway line, naturally we're going to have our two backs of four fairly deep um, and that is going to create overloads in our defensive um, area. There's usually there'll be a lot of 2v1s as I pointed out and this is really important to, to make sure the team are aware that when there's a player on the ball, really to try and make two to come across because what we're going to be doing is if it's one side of the pitch and the other the team is going to transition across um, I'll do another video um, more on that really but um, or in, in more depth but yeah the team will transition across the pitch from side to side so we'll leave space on one side so if they want to try the diagonal switch over um, they can do that um, unlikely they'll be able to make it over it will take a great pass so we're happy to, to do this there um, and then the final point is attacker's reaction when winning possession and making the runs in behind the defence into the created space. So it's really just to, um, to really emphasise to the strikers that as soon as they see one, we win possession or two, even better, when it looks like we're going to win possession, they start making their run. That, that's ideally what we're looking for because they're already on the ball. Defenders know when they win that ball. We're looking straight away to go in behind, so they're going to instinctively win the ball in behind. If the strikes are already running, the opposition defenders are just not going to have a chance. Um, and if they do read it, fair play to them, but it'll be a really good battle to see who wins. Okay, so thank you for watching the video, and stay tuned for some more videos on similar topics. If you've got any requests, uh, leave them in the comments section. Thank you very much.